my favorite language is German. So excuse me and uh, let me read the text of my lecture and in addition it will be presented on the screen uh, which should facilitate the reception. Two problems in my uh, presentation. Uh, the relation between the two words is an old problem. We can see it in the ancient Greek philosophy and uh, the second great problem is the problem of uh, the relation between two words per Plato. I think about ideas and mathematical objects. First is the question uh, which is the relation between uh, ideas and mathematical objects. And the second question uh, which, is, which are the, the mathematical ob objects, what's the status of mathematical ob objects, and why the mathematical Platonism is not compatible with Plato philosophy. Uh, just the questions that, that I try to answer. Uh, the <coughs> evolution has provided us with the ability to describe the word that provides us with a word appropriate representation of our scale. There is no evolutionary necessity to know <coughs> it on other scales. Science and philosophy convince us that this case really exists. The problem is, however, that we are forced to perceive the word on many scales from the perspective on one scale. The question arises, what is the word given to us on our, sc uh, our scale and what is the word on other scales? If we focus our attention on natural science, I think that one can agree with the statement that the most accurate description of reality and vari in, at various scales is provided by the language of mathematics. If so, then the image of the word depends essentially on the description that is made in this language. At the time, however, the mathematics determines what the word looks like, especially at those levels that are not available to us. But is mathematics the same as the structure of the word? Or is it only its subjective image, the right scale in which we live? This question we try to answer in antiquity. Particular attention was paid to them by Plato and members of his academy who initiated the program of mathematical natural science, a program that became the basis for the development of technical civilization. In this way, the academy has become not only the first university in the history of the world, but also the place where the most important project deciding about the de development of science and civilization was created. Its creators, apart from Prato, were such eminent thinkers as Eudoxus of Nidos, Taitet, Menaipos, Taudios, Leon, Speusips, Xenocrates, Heraclitus of Pontus, or later Euclid and Eratosthenes. Widely accepted in contemporary philosophy of mathematics, the view is that according to Plato's conviction, mathematics is the domain of ideal beings, ideal beings, ideas of eternal and unchanging character, and that exist, that exist independently of the subject decision. Two issues seem important. The first concerns the question, was Plato really thinking so? The second, more important, what effect does mathematics have on the understanding of the nature of the world? On its many levels of being. Three things need consideration. The first is related to the Platonic theory of two words. The second with the method of building a mathematical structure. Third concerns the ontology of mathematics. 
popular belief is that in Plato philosophy we have two words separate from each other, one of which is the word of phenomena and the other is the word of ideas. The conclusion derived from this assumption is that mathematics belongs to the Platonic world of ideas, which is eternal and unchanging. In this world, mathematic, mathematics object obtain the status of an ideal being and are in their existence independent of the subject and phenomenon. What a man can do is to learn through the intellect the self-existing world of mathematical objects. This popular belief, unfortunately, is not consistent with Plato's philosophy and his understanding of mathematics. However, it has preserved in the history of the interpretation of Platonic philosophy and transferred it into the philosophy of mathematics. The reason lies in the simplified vision of Platonism itself, which assumes the existence of only two levels of reality for which ideas and phenomena are considered while the object of mathematics are situated on the side of the ideas. Meanwhile, Plato, analyzing the ways of the existence of mathematical objects, concluded that mathematical objects are not related either to the world of ideas and to the world of phenomena. He claimed that they occupy an intermediate position and do not belong to any of them. Instead, they are only the product of our mind. This position requires a further explanation because it has a decisive influence on Plato's understanding of mathematics as well as a contemporary discussion about mathematical Platonism. Plato tries to explain his position first and foremost in Book 6 and Book 7 of the State and in the letter 7. The original starting point is the conviction that the first stage of cognition, including mathematical cognition, emerges from the observation of nature and its phenomenal form, of course. Then arise sensory imagina imaginations that provide only images of phenomena, ecclesia. We see, say Plato, reflections of reality that are born in our senses. They are imperfect and often elusive. At the next stage, we try to make the images credible, pistis. We try to confirm the data of sensual experience by examining and observing certain stages, states of things from as many perspectives as possible. Today, such behavior would, be, would correspond to empirical tests. The most important element of this study has made Plato the ability to read patterns present in phenomena. Patterns indicate the order in which the phenomena organized, as well as the existence of regularities that this order def defines. Plato refers uh, to movement patterns, harmony patterns, or in relation to human activities, ethical and aesthetic patterns. In the context of the Platonic philosophy of mathematics, the most important role is played by the patterns of the movement of celestial bodies founded on the man's ability to see them. Plato recognizes this ability as the supreme, supreme gift of the gods. Observation of patterns present in nature, rhythms, motifs, harmony, symmetry of proportions, directs the subject attention towards their source. But the source itself is no longer available for sensual cognition. It is available only for intellectual cognition. On the border between sensual and intellectual cognition, there is a kind of intuition that Plato describes as a suspicion of truth. The point is that with sensory data based on them, we are able to formulate hypotheses regarding the sources perceived in the nature of regularity, patterns, and proportions. This hypothesis defines Plato as true opinion. That's a crazy uh, 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 aletex doxa or something. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, <the different coughs> 
To confirm the value, please verify them. This is the task of yet another higher cognitive power, which is, of course, reason, dianoia. The function of reason boils down to, to the skill of logical reasoning and analysis of causal, causal relationship, which Plato calls causal splicing, simple care. Reason is the authority of the subject who plays the essential role in the meaning of the Platonic philosophy of mathematics. His role boils down to the ability to create intellectual models of sensually given state of affairs and patterns perceived in nature. These models are representations of phenomena and patterns at the intellect level. The model creation is based on the abstraction skills, aphairesis and is the product of the activities confirming the permanent occurrence of a certain set of features in a certain class of object, objects. You can consider the internal structure of the model. You can also analyze the relationship to, of a given model with other models. You can examine, uh, examine which ones are possible, which are necessary, and which are completely excluded. The analysis of these models is the subject of the work of mathematicians. However, a mathematician, let alone a mathematics philosopher, cannot avoid asking about the legitimacy of creating such models. The question arises, what makes mathematical objects being human creation not arbitrary? Plato's seeking answers appealed to the concept of idea measures guaranteeing not only the functioning of the cosmic order, but also guaranteeing the correctness of building mathematical models. He decided that mathematics cannot derive its own justification from the existence of variable and temporary phenomena, nor can it derive its justification from arbitrary decision of the subject. There must, therefore, be something that Arantis, this correctness of proceeding in mathematics and order in the organization of, of the phenomena. Plato proposed the adoption of the eternal model of the organization of the world, which is created according to unchanging regularities that define the order of the cosmos. These norms being measures of the organization of the cosmic order, he calls ideas. Today, I think, this is my hypothesis, the equivalent would be the laws of nature and the laws of physics, maybe, for physical world. It is not difficult to notice at once that these laws exist differently than the phenomena exist. The physical law exists differently that, than its implementation. As far as we know, it is immutable, has the future of unity, there are no two identical laws, and does not depend on the decision of sub subject, of course. We can only say about such laws that they are, and that they are always as they are. Plato attributed to this way of existence the name of being, and they were of being called really real, on the song. He decided that beings, ideas, constitute a separate reality which constitute the eternal organization model of the cosmos and is the essence in the existence of all phenomenal structures and processes. This model manifests itself in the form of symmetry, proportions, various types of harmony, which can be understood as defining the essence and behavior of phenomenal structures. The goal of philosophy and science, says Plato, is to reach these idea measures that condition a particular kind of order regardless of whether it is cosmic, ethical, or aesthetic. Of course, of course, this also applies to mathematical order. That is why Plato also postulates the existence of mathematical ideas that form the basis and cause of mathematical order. However, what is the most important and what 
one must always remember, these ideas are not mathematical objects themselves. Mathematical ideas constitute a complete and autonomous world existing outside the world of, ma of our mathematics, just as the law of physics exists outside the world of physical theories we create. As Aristotle has commands, no mathematical operation can be made on ideas. One can only examine the relationship that exists between them. Such a study is not and cannot be, therefore, the pur purpose of the mathematical method for which axiomatic is proper, but is the subject of a dialectical method whose purpose is to study the relationship between ideas. Confusing the advocates of mathematical Platonism is the unconsciousness of the difference that occurs between mathematical ideas and mathematical objects. Plato tries to explain this precisely in the letter seven. Plato suggests that you consider the mathematical object a circle. You can assign a name to it. It could be changed because, as he argues, quotation, no, we weigh, no property is granted by virtue of some firmly established principle, and nothing is impossible in it, so that what we now call circular, name simple, and what is simple, circular, and that for those who rearrange these names and use the, t the term, uh, use them in reverse, they have no less certainty in use. End of the quotation. Next, we try to formulate a fairly precise definition of a circle. It should cover everything that is round and circular. circular. Most often, according to Plato, an imperfect definition is formulated based on specific sentences, which is, quotation, if they consist of names or nouns of verbs, they certainly do not have certain, uh, certain, certain, sorry. In the further course of the procedure, an attempt may be made to build a model or a schema corresponding to what is defined. We can do this by creating thoughtful constructions, presenting drawings or spatial visual visualization. Spatial visualization. Later, the analysis of this model and its relationships to other models, mathematical objects, is developed into a special theory, including all previous stage. Theory is the highest degree of cognition that a cognizing subject can come to thanks to his abilities, sensual perceptions, abstractions, and logical analysis. Plato, however, strongly believes that the regards of the degree of precision appropriate to the above mentioned level of cognition, one should be aware of, citation, quotation, how unclear each of these four disclosures are, how much in them are arbitrariness and uncertainty, and how much they depend on the cognizing subject and his restriction. Meanwhile, it is required that the mathematical cognition be certain. It is to be a cognition that characterizes necessity and universality of truthfulness. Therefore, there must be some basis that would justify and validate the four existing procedures of cognition, name, definition, model, and theory. We find it as Plato says, in existence, the idea of the circle, the circle as such, autototally closed. Such an idea must be called a real being, a let us on, the essence of thing, to the T. Plato describes this at fifth disclosure, 2.2. The circle in itself exists differently than the one which is the intellectual model of the circle we draw which the Turner creates, or which we observe in phenomena. The circle in itself is the highest, unchanging, and only measure of all circularity, a condition for the possibility of creating theories, models, definitions, and names, 
the circle. The circle in itself has regularity, the measure of the specificity of everything that is circular. It's one unchangeable and independent of the subject's establishment. The same applies to number. If we take the idea, the idea number two, then with its help we are able to determine the essence of each mathematical, mathematical two. Using the descriptive language, one can say that the idea number two defines the stru uh, structural features of each mathematical two. And the mathematical two is only an intellectual model created by the subject. If we, if we add two plus two, we are not in the world of ideas, but at the level of our mathematics. A good description of this, good description of this situation was presented, in my opinion, by Michael Heller. He accepts that the distinction between mathematics by the small m and the mathematics by the large m. The first is the mathematics that man creates. The second is the mathematics which is inherent to nature and to which we have no direct access. Indirect access is provided only by representation, which is our mathematics, mathematics by small m. Mathematics by the large M corresponds to the level of platonic mathematical idea. This situation is explained by Plato in the cave metaphor. We humans are only able to see the world of shadows. We know, however, that these shadows are shadows of something we do not directly see. We are figures, fire, in the cave. Therefore, we are forced to create images, models of what we do not see. These models are learned that with all the disadvantages and limitations that arise in the subjective process of cognition. However, according to Plato, there are moments, being a gift of the gods, when it is an intuitive, in a very vague way, we are given a temporary seeing of the outlines of the regularity, organizing the order of nature. This is the moment, the moment when someone in the cave suddenly senses that there is something which is the cause of and condition of the existence of shadows. This moment defines Plato's the reversal of the soul, as the periagoge des psyches. In such a foresight, however, we are not able to persevere long. We return quickly to our shadows, leading further the ardos inference from the representation. We return to our mathematical world of shadows, to our mathematics by the small m. We are returning to our mathematical objects. We still have an answer to the question. Where did the conviction widely shared by representative of mathematical Platonism originate that Plato believed that mathematical subjects exist in a way that they are independent of the subject. The answer is simple. Such a belief was born not in the thoughts of Plato, but in the thoughts of his successors, Speusip and Xenocrates. Speusip decided that the place of Platonic ideas should occupy mathematical objects. He assigned them all the attributes of idea, separate existence, eternity, immutability, and independence from the subject. He decided that it is an unnecessary to double the word and accept the existence of something beyond just mathematics. He put mathematics at the top of the word in this way. Mathics, mathematics took the place of the Platonic word of ideas. Aristotle considered this idea the worst, probably because he thought that Speusip wanted to replace philosophical cognition of the world and even its very existence with mathematics in this way. Aristoteles attributed to Speusip the conviction that the whole philosophy of his time boils down to mathematics. Speusip's stand was strange-sanded 
by Xenocrates, another Academicus scholar, who decided to replace ontology with mathematics. He claimed that mathematics is the only acceptable ontology because the world is in fact created and constituted according to mathematical patterns and structures. Thus, modern advocates of mathematical Platonists must remember that by the adopting Platonists and the position of mathematical Platonists, they essentially adopt the position of Speusippus of Xenocrates, not of Plato himself. I'm thinking here about such mathematicians, for example, Roger Penrose. What follows from this both consideration? First of all, Plato Platonist is not the Platonist that is usually referred to by followers of mathematical Platonists. Secondly, the mathematics we have in always our we, we have is always our mathematics. They are models created by us representing nature, and the nature itself uses a different mathematics, the outline of which we see only in a trace in intellectual intuition. We will never see fully the mathematics of nature because it is unabable from level of which we live. We are no gods. We are not seeing through this whole situation. We know, however, that this mathematics is there. And that is justifies the existence of our mathematics, the mathematics of the shadow world. This also, this also applies to logic that organizes different levels of world organization. We people who see only shadows want to describe and understand other levels of reality with this view. But this level exists differently. Have a completely different structure, different logic. Getting to know them requires different methods. Plato suggested that this situation should be taken into account without confusing the means of existence at various scales. The most common type of error we make is the attempt to describe other scales using the proper description of our scale. But otherwise, there are ideas or mathematical objects and yet other space-time phenomena. They demand to appropriate test methods for them. Today we begin to understand that the logic valid in the micro scale is different, the, mac the macro is different, different is our own scale. Perhaps it is worth giving fight to the intuition of ancient thinkers who, as the poet says, are closer to the God and see better than us. It is like in mathematics and physics. I do not know. As a historian of ancient philosophy, I will accept answers for mathematicians and physicists. Thank you very much. Through observation of this, uh, I would say, this 
I think this is a process. Uh, Plato shows the different levels. We start with the sensor observation of the nature. We are seeing regularities, proportions, all. Uh, you must remember this is a Greek kind of understanding the word. We are seeing. Seeing is the most important uh, uh, sense. So, but it is an initiation, initiation of, of, of the process. Then it comes higher. Then comes the whole dianoia. Uh, I do not say about, say about uh, uh, something like uh, sort of Aletes Doxa, the, the uh, point uh, which uh, uh, is create a hi hypothesis. Hypothesis. Then the hi 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 hypothesis must that is uh, built on on the sensory. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we get a hi uh, intuition, a hypothesis. Then we must take this intuition and the hip hypothesis with all log logical apparatus. Then cre we create a model of uh, a situation. Of course, we have another higher uh, possibility. This is in intellectual intuition. I do not uh, say about it uh, too much because it is a very complicated problem by Aristoteles and by Plato the most important uh, level of uh, cognition is uh, intellectual intuition. That is uh, 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 direct seeing, seeing of uh, some elements of the word, of the structure, but very, very uh, 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 unclear. Uh, but he's sure later that we must that it must be a word that justified the whole process and the procedure. But we have no uh, uh, way to direct way to, and it's impossible to find such a such a seeing because we are not gods. And, and the process will be, will be unending. Yes, of course. Thank you. 
Yes, I think it's, it's, it's a great problem to see uh, uh, what you said. It's, it's, a, it's a great theory of, 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 of Aristoteles of the potential and, and, and act uh, uh, relation. I think that, that uh, there's a consequence of, of, of uh, Plato. We uh, can't forget that, that Aristoteles was 20 years in the Plato Academy and, and was a Platonic all the life. And to, to the end of his uh, days, he was a Platonist. That's the only interpretation of Plato, his philosophy. Then after we have uh, such a, a concept that Aristoteles is something uh, else than uh, uh, that, that Plato. Uh, there was the same school. <coughs> and I remember that Professor Białobrzewski, Professor Janik, I try to use the, the, the Aristotelian uh, 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 terms uh, pos uh, uh, act, pot potential act, and, and that's, that's uh, uh, yes, yes, a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, proposition to, to maybe to understand the difference between the quantum world and the, uh, and, 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 uh, and the world of uh, classic uh, level. Um, but I don't know, uh, I'm not a phys physicist, so I, I, I can't show it how, how it's possible to use this uh, theory of, of Aristotle uh, perfectly. That, that, that's, that's very interesting for me. Uh, now to use the Aristotelian theory of active potential act to, to, to physics, to quantum physics and, and, and uh, to the classical thing. Uh, because it's a great problem of actualization. Yes. What is the process of actualization? That's right. Uh, the last uh, sentence by Plato, we have no two words in the sense that there are two words. There are only different levels of existing of the world, not other words. And we can see it by Aristoteles and his conception of potential like this is whole process. It's not different words. It's so, 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 so too easy to, to, to think about it. This is the same word, but every level of the word exists different. So we have and what well, well, Plato says in Timaeus, one word and many levels of existing in this word, so we must know it and we must understand that we knew very well our level and the other levels are not so easy to <laughs> describe. Just quickly, uh, so, um, Yes, that is clear. 
uh, that's the problem. Because of the great difference between the, the concept of mathematics by Aristoteles and Plato. Aristoteles uh, said that, that uh, uh, mathematic object com comes in, uh, in the uh, abstraction, uh, throat abstraction, the process of abstraction. So the elements of mathematics are inherent in, 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 in things, and so we, with abstraction, we're, so mathematics is a consequence of abstraction. But in this way, he uh, uh, continues the, 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 the Plato intuition that the model is construction too for Plato. Uh, 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 for Plato, the, the mathematical model is the construction of intellect, of aphoresis, of uh, uh, abstraction. The same way. But <coughs> Plato said that uh, we are, uh, do not find, find uh, the justification you know, of, of, of the matic, ma mathematics not only in the real thing. That's, that's only inspiration. We must think about uh, justification uh, not so uh, small. Uh, we must think about the whole uh, cosmos and not only uh, I think at our level. That's too, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a small, uh, that, 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 that's the worst thing that we are start only of, of our level and by the, no. Okay, I What's I happened with Plato? Right, true. <laughs> Depending on which way you look at the shadows, you will see different things. Yes, uh, yes. Three dimensional uh, projections. But uh, Galileo told us, and this was quite revolutionary, um, that you can invent, you can ask questions. And which way do you look? Well, I don't want to get too deep, as opposed to mathematics. You just say, depending on which question you ask, mm -hmm. you will have different. I fully agree. I agree. Yes. Thank you very much. I I, I agree. I agree. That's that's, that's that's clear. I agree. Thank you. You said better than I. <laughs> Przepraszam, mógłbyś to powiedzieć po polsku, ja bym to złapał tą końcówkę, bo...
uh, yes, uh, it's clear. The Sumatra first. The Sumatra first. The Sumatra first. Quite easy, like Trump. <coughs> Uh, Sumatra first, and uh, uh, this uh, clear. Uh, we can't. Uh, of course, we can build a model, uh, symmetrical model, of course. But we are look at the uh, cosmic order, and we see the symmetry. And uh, at the Plato uh, dialogue, the Timaeus, you have the symmetry as the foundation of the uh, cosmic order, uh, and. Uh, our task is to find the symmetries. And after 3,000 years, we are in the same situation. We are look for <laughs> symmetries. And, and, and I, I know that you, uh, uh, you are working with, with the constants, with the unchangeable uh, elements. Uh, so, so I, I agree that that, that that that's very important at the moment. Okay. 